I had one, somebody once told me never ever start a presentation with an apology. But I'm going to make two apologies. Number one, I don't have a cool guy movie like William <laughs> So he's inspiring me. I'm, thinking, I'm sitting in my chair thinking I could make a cool guy movie, um, thinking maybe Brad Pitt or George Clooney would like me. <laughs> so next time we get together, then, you know, watch for that. I'm, I'm hoping we can, we can do that. The second one, I apologize particularly to the ladies in the crowd. I'm not quite as young and good looking as William is, and I can't offer you 200 carat diamonds. <laughs> but I can offer you, tell you that we are going to find a lot more oil in, in East Africa. So I think that's, that's the only thing I can give you, and uh, I'm going I'm to take you through why, why I say that. You know, I, think, I think we've had a great run of success. I think everybody here in the room hopefully has made some money on Africa oil. But I think this is the, just the beginning. I think we're really starting to ramp up now. And I think as good as 2012 has been, as good as 2013 has been, 2014 is probably going to be the biggest year we'll have in, uh, in African oil. I'll tell you why I think that. So again, I think uh, it wasn't that long ago I was here. I was, I was telling Robert when he said uh, you can come again and, and, and gather the faithful. Uh, I wasn't sure there were going to be that many out here. so. Maybe William, William and the Diamond have brought in a few of them, but uh, I'm very glad to see that, uh, that the interest level is still high. So a lot of what you see here, you'll have seen before, and I'll be updating you on, on stuff that you've already seen, but some of you may be newcomers, so I will go back through a, a little bit of background. Um, I think really, as we develop the company, I think this is one of the big things that's happened in the last year, is we have a development project here. I think people that invested in Africa oil in the last three, four years were really investing on, on a pure exploration upside and, and basically soft value, I would call it. Now we've got hard value underpinning the stock. We have a development project. We are moving forward to develop a development project, and we are going to build a pipeline. We are going to export crude. And both our Apollo and ourselves and the Gulf Coast government are all working towards that same objective now. So that's a firm value, and we'll, and we'll talk about what we've got and what, what, what the plans are going forward on that. <laughs> but I do want to point out that this still is primarily an exploration story. You know, we have just started. Uh, we have 100 prospects to drill. We've only drilled six that we've announced so far. Uh, we've had a 66.7% rate uh, success rate on those prospects, and I can guarantee you we're going to find more oil, uh, particularly in the Sokovo Pichar Basin. Okachar Basin, we have 100% success rate so far. Uh, we've got nine more prospects to drill that are very similar to the, the ones we've already drilled. And I, and I think in this we'll have a very high success rate. Um, uh, and, and part of the big romance is the other wells, the other basins that we haven't uh, opened up yet. You'll see in our schedule we're going to be drilling what we think are the best four or five basins uh, out there. Uh, and we'll have results uh, by the end of next year on those. And that will be the big, I think, if you're looking for the next step change in the value of Africa oil, it'll be, you know, watch those wells. If we report a big discovery in a new basin that hasn't been reported before, that's going to be a step change in the value of the company. Um, I have advised the security people here, if anybody asks me about where we're going to get financing, that they're going to be escorted out of the building. You know, no more questions about financing. In the last, last uh, six months, all I've been dealing, in fact, it was actually three weeks after my last financing that I got the first question about when, what we were going to do on the next financing. So we went maybe a little bit overboard. We raised $450 million. Uh, we actually had $940 million offered to us uh, uh, on the book. Um, our friends at Pareto were the, by far the biggest uh, uh, of the seats. Uh, we had Citibank. Sunday and, and Pareto were our three banks who were raising money. Pareto raised by far the biggest amount of that money, so I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, I'm also pleased with some of the new shareholders we got in. Uh, quite a bit of this was taken up with our biggest existing shareholders. So we got uh, several new big shareholders, including uh, uh, our first real big Swedish fund, Nordea, that's come in. So Nordea now owns 6% of Africa oil. And, uh, uh, we made a couple promises to Nordea um, when they came in for that. Uh, the, the first promise we made is that we would move to the big board in Sweden. So uh, uh, we are in the process now of upgrading our listing in Canada from the TSX Venture to the TSE. Uh, that should be completed by the end of the year. We hope it's going to be completed. And then the first quarter of next year, we will move to the big board in Sweden. 
Um, it's only a, a fairly simple eight-week process once we move to the big boy in Canada. So we hope that that gives the opportunity for more of the big Swedish uh, uh, institutions to come in and invest in, in the stock uh, once we get onto the big boy. We also made a promise that uh, we're going to uh, 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 step up our CSR activities. I think uh, Norby has been uh, a very good social investor, very focused on CSR issues, and I think uh, we, we pledge to work with them. Uh, I think we do a very good job on this, but I think there's always room for improvement, uh, and I think uh, we're going to work together with them to uh, try to raise our game a bit on the CSR side. Uh, and in fact, uh, the third promise is that we, we, we promise to take their people, their CSR people down to the field itself uh, and take a look at, at, at what we're doing down there. So as I've said many times in the past in the group, I'm very proud of the way we handle our community relations. I'm very proud of the way we do things there. Uh, but uh, you know, every, everyone can always get better, and I think uh, um, having Norby as a partner to help us on that is going to be uh, quite good. Uh, the other point I'd like to make about the financing is we believe this is the last equity financing. So the reason we raised that much money was really to get us to this point in mid 2015. So uh, we actually should have enough money not only to see that, but to have about $50 million cash to spare by the middle of 2015. And uh, uh, that's, not a, that's not a date we just picked out of the hat. <coughs> by mid 2015, we believe we'll basically be at development decision. So we, uh, uh, at that point, that's the point we want to bring in an industry partner. The process will probably start towards the end of next year. It'll probably run the first quarter of 2015. But we'd like to, by the middle of 2015, when we, we and our partner Teller believe we'll make a field investment decision uh, to have a, a, a strategic partner uh, lined up to, to come in and carry us through development. Now, during that process, if someone asks, offers us enough money to buy the whole company or to buy out our interest in Block 10 BB and 13 P, you know, as Mr. Lundin always said, uh, anything's for sale at any time if the price is right, uh, we would also consider that. I think our, our primary goal, though, is to stay in. We want to stay in because it's still too early, really, to understand what we have. So I think uh, the, the process we envision is bringing in a, a big oil company, a multinational, uh, one of the super majors, or one of the big NOCs from India, China, China uh, Korea, Japan, uh, and basically just negotiating how much can we keep and still be carried 100% to, to first production. So uh, um, we may do that in combination with Tullow, but you know, the, the ideal situation is we basically have 20, 30 companies in the process, four or five bidding against each other. For some of you that were in the Tanganyika um, um, sale, you know, that was kind of the, the, the perfect storm. We had the Indian National Oil Company, ONGC, bidding against Sinatec, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get into that uh, again. So we'll, it's a little too early to say exactly what we're going to do. You know, we don't have a strategy for how we're going to exit or if we're going to exit or how we're going to bring a partner in uh, completely firmed up because we still have a lot of wells to drill to understand what we've got. So whether it's the whole company, it's, a, it's all of our assets, or it's a small part of our assets, uh, we'll make that decision before the end of next year. And during this time, in the next year, we are going to have a lot of wells. We think we'll drill at least 25 wells uh, by the end of next year. Uh, we've got six, seven rigs right now, and we'll have at least six rigs working full time uh, for all of next year. So the money we just raised is going to be spent, over 80% of it's going to be spent just on drilling, and that's really the focus uh, for 2014. Again, most of you have seen these slides. I'll just show a couple of background slides, more for people who, who don't understand, who haven't been here before and didn't even know the story. But, we're basically in the Horn of Africa. We're in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia. Uh, what attracted us in here originally was that basically these three countries hadn't had wells drilled in over 20 years yet. All around them, there were multi-billion barrel oil fields being found. Uh, and in fact, the geology extended into these three countries. So we spent a lot of time, did a lot of homework, uh, uh, looked at all the data that the people before us did, and then we started basically on a land grab. So we, uh, we ended up basically leasing all the best acreage in every one of the basins uh, with little or no competition. Back in 2000, uh, 2008, uh, you know, early 2009, nobody really cared a thing about East Africa. So we're a little bit fortuitous since then, of course, it's come up uh, and is much more interesting. Our friends at Tullo have found big oil fields in Uganda. Uh, even the offshore now, they found massive gas reserves in, 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 in uh, Tanzania and Mozambique. 
But this has now become one of the hottest exploration areas in the world. But because we got in here first, because we got this land, we were able to bring in some good partners. So we brought in Color Oil as our biggest partner. They paid our way for about two years, all exploration expenses. Uh, we just brought in Marathon Oil. They're going to be paying our way this year and next year in these three blocks. Um, it's kind of on the on the uh, outskirts of the of the main play. Uh, we had a couple of other partners, and now we're getting calls basically from everything. I've had every super major call me uh, wanting to get into the play. I've had all these big NLCs calling me because they see the potential and they see the reserve. And I told them all the same thing. You know, wait a year and then and then we'll talk. Because I think neither Lucas Lundin nor I want to be the guys that walk away from potentially uh, a, a, a play this big. Uh, this is my favorite slide still. This is the tertiary play. This is the Cretaceous play, which is, a, is about 60% of our acreage. And if you look at the, uh, the, the area of this, you superimpose this on the North Sea, these blocks are size of the entire North Sea. So um, you don't really get that scale perception when you're, when you're looking at a map of Africa, but it, it is a, a massive, huge area. And it's very rare in this world that we open up new basins it's, it's unheard of that we have this much acreage with this many basins that we control um, between 30 and 50 percent. But we're 50 percent partners in the heart of the trend, these three blocks, and we have at least 30 and, and in some cases 50 percent with the other blocks. So we've got a very good acreage position. It is very early days. If you look at the North Sea, they drilled 2,400 wells in the North Sea. We drilled 18. So uh, it is still very early days, but it, it is very encouraging. Um, the other thing I want to point out, you know, we do have 13 sub-basins in this trend. Um, we've proven one of them so far. Um, to me, when you have all of these geologically similar basins, it's very unlikely that only one of them would be productive, and it's more unlikely that we'd be smart enough to drill the only productive one first. So there will be other basins, I think, that will open up. Some of them definitely look better than others, and I think uh, I'll show you some of the examples that we think are, are the best ones that we'll be focusing on first. Some of them are very frontier, have no seismic data, no, no uh, pre previous exploration, uh, but it, there still is an awful lot of potential uh, in this trend that uh, we haven't addressed yet. So starting with the Lokachar Basin, this is the basin that's worked. And so this is a very prolific basin. Uh, I, I realize there's not a lot of geologists and geophysicists in the crowd. I'll, I'll apologize now for all the seismic and maps. But simply, this is a map that shows the depth of the basin. So the blue is deep, the, the yellow is shallow. Basically, everything that you see here in blue and green is where the oil source rocks are present day mature and generating out oil. So we're in a great position that our prospects are sitting right in the middle of what they call the oil kitchen. The oil is just being generated all around them and just can migrate to right into these structures. In fact, this is a great source rock, and that's why this is going to be a great basin. It's, it's over 150 meters thick. It's got total organic carbon over 10% in many places, and it's present day oil mature. So it, it doesn't get much better than that. Every piece of porosity you see is filled with oil. So we've drilled three wells on the String of Pearls now that have been discoveries Twigasau, Tikalis, and Gamia. Um, we're, we're just finishing this well now. We should have that um, uh, results announced by the uh, end of the month. Um, and we're just about to spud this one. Alma saying uh, should be spud next week. So the, the real heart of the top five prospects uh, in, the, in the heart and the uh, string of pearls will all be um, evaluated by early, uh, um, by the end of this year or early next year. Um, our plan is to drill Etom and to drill Ecosawan as well, so we'll have most of these um, drilled up uh, in the first half of next year. On the other side of the basin, we've made a discovery here at Tuco, and we've got a number of other plays over here in what we call the Rift Blank Play. So you'll see there's a rig that's over here, and it's going to be staying here. It's very simple geology. We're just looking at bumps along the, the, the basin boundary called. The actual trap is where the sands pinch up against this big basin bounding fault, and this is where the primary reservoirs are. Very good reservoirs, 23 to 29% porosity up to three Darcy's of permeability. Both of these wells were calculated to the flow of about 5,000 barrels a day, so um, uh, very good reservoir quality. The, the Agese well looks like it's very similar uh, reservoir quality, so I think we're, we're getting very confident that this uh, upper reservoir is quite good. 
we do have quite a bit of oil in the lower reservoirs. One of them is the lower Latone sand, where we just have the one penetration. Not quite as good a reservoir, so we're not going to focus on that first, but uh, potentially a, a very thick uh, oil column. And then this interesting one, which was in the Tuiga well, where we have fractured basement, uh, about 700 meters of it. Um, again, totally full of oil, but looks like it's fairly low porosity, fairly low permeability. So we'll save these for later. These are kind of in the bank. We'll, we'll, we'll focus our efforts on our development uh, in this shallow one. And, and you'll see many of the wells we drill will only be to the shallow reservoir and won't even bother going down to the deep reservoir uh, in the short term. So this is what we're going to be drilling next year, just in the low Pichar Basin. Every one of these yellow stars is a firm well. I think we'll end up uh, drilling more wells. We're getting much better on our drilling uh, times and costs, uh, where we were drilling wells that were about 120 days uh, to begin with. We're now drilling wells that are about 60 days. And the prognosis on some of these wells, like Amelstein and Ewar, is that they're, they're probably going to be 45-day wells. So uh, um, the cost of the well is proportional to the time we spend there. So we're moving from our first well was $60 million, our next two wells are $40 million, and we drove two $25 million wells. And I think we're gonna start seeing wells come in for under 20 million. So uh, uh, I think as we get more efficient in drilling these, we're going to drill more wells. So I think the, uh, like Etown North and, and some of these other ones that are on here, we also will get drilled next year, uh, basically for the same amount of budget. I think we got all excited about our 368 million barrels that we announced uh, over the summer. Uh, it is a fairly big number, but I, I have to say, for us, uh, it, it's, a, it's actually a fairly small number for, for what we have, not only for what we've already seen, but what we hope to see in the basin. So a good example of that is, you know, half of that number is basically in Gamia, uh, 180 million barrels of contingent resource to see uh, in this down dip lot. But up dip of that, there's another 281 million barrels in the up dip fault lot, which hasn't been counted yet in these numbers. Uh, same at Twiga. Twiga, we have 87 million barrel in this down dip section. The up dip of that, there's another 132 million. So just from these two accumulations at all, alone, if we're able to prove up that prospective resource, uh, which Gaffney Pine gives us a 62% chance of, of doing, um, uh, these could be 700 million barrels almost just unto the, themselves. That number also doesn't include the Acolis discovery that we've just made. Uh, which has uh, a pre-drill estimate of 234. Based on the thickness of the reservoir, that probably is a conservative number as well. So we think we're, we're, we're really, you know, probably uh, uh, pushing towards a billion barrels with, with the Tuco and all of these once we drill the appraisal well and once we, we prove up those, those volumes. Uh, and then you look at the other prospects that we're getting ready to drill. So Agente was just basically uh, getting close to finishing it had a pre-drill estimate of 276 million barrels. Uh, ETOM, which was one of the next ones we're going to drill, has a pre-drill estimate of 467 million. And Amosing, which is a, the next one down, has a pre-drill estimate of 172. So these are all big prospects. And I think you know, we, we will be very disappointed if we don't get at least a billion barrels of recoverable reserves just on this side of the basin along, and possibly a, a similar number uh, on the other side. So I think we've been saying all along, Paulo and, our, and, our, and ourselves and our reserve officers, and I'll show you some figures, that we think this basin is probably one to three billion barrels. And I think what we've seen so far, um, that's the, nothing to change our mind on that. If anything, I think uh, we're, we're looking more at the upper end of that uh, range than the, uh, than the lower end. Uh, we also are going to be doing appraisal. We're going to be shooting a 3D. So this whole area here, we're going to shoot 3D seismic on really more for development, for putting development wells in, uh, appraisal wells in. Uh, but um, we may be able to, to get some additional traps, more subtle traps on this uh, with the 3D seismic. So some of the things that you see on here, like uh, look like potential stratigraphic traps. Once we have 3D, we may be able to come out and start drilling some of those as well. So this is like the northern part of the uh, string of pearls trend. Again, um, these are both discoveries now. This is the well we're just finishing off. Uh, an interesting well in that there's no real geologic separation between this and Tuiga. So one of the concepts we have is maybe that this is all one big field. Um, again, the chance of success pre-drill was 54% chance of success, and uh, we should be releasing that before the end of the month. And then Etown uh, is one that's quite interesting to us. It's actually three different fault blocks. But again, 467 million, it's, it's the biggest pre-drill estimate of any of the prospects we've got. 
uh, mostly just because of such a large size. But it'll take probably three wells to actually prove it up. Uh, so we will be concentrating here. And we've got this series of prospects to the north that also look quite, quite compelling. They're a little further away from the cooking pot, but they still should be in good position for charge. Um, in the southern part, this is what I was talking about with Gamia. This is Gamia that, uh, that we're getting credit for. This is the part that we haven't got any credit for. So again, 280 million barrels in this fault block with a chance of success of 64%. So, um, and then Amosane is the one we're drilling now. So this well should flood next week. And uh, it's all rigged up, ready to go. And uh, uh, again, a high chance of success, 34%, 172 million barrels. On the other side of the basin, again, a, a quite a compelling structure. This is a Chuco, the one we drilled. This is a discovery. This is the old shell discovery. And uh, again, we we're having trouble mapping it as a separate uh, uh, accumulation. If you map this basically at the lowest spill point, this whole thing turns into one big oil field. So we'll know that once we've drilled it out, but uh, there's nothing to separate Lopero discovery with shell made from this Ituco uh, area. The volumes you see of 300 million is basically just this little area here. So this one actually could grow quite a bit as well if we're able to prove that it, it, it's a bigger structure. So this rig, uh, we have a rig on here now. The testing of this will start next week. Uh, and then we're going to actually skid this over and test this shallow section that we weren't able to test with the uh, <coughs> um, uh, with the existing well. We, we, this is all in 17 and a half inch holes. We're just going to move the rig over and just drill this little section here, which had really good shows in it and good reservoir quality when we drilled through uh, with the original hole. Then we'll move over and drill this Ewoy well, and then we'll go down and drill Acuna. Uh, Acuna. So th I think this is a very interesting uh, turn. I think it, it could have similar volume to the uh, to the other side of the basin as well. So I think this is an important slide because again, you know, we, we, we got ourselves all excited with this 368 million barrels, but this is really the tip of the iceberg. If you look just in the three, they only did three fields, this field, this field, and this field, uh, to come up with that 368 million barrels. But just within the field themselves, you can get up to 850 million barrels just with these three fields, not counting anything else. On the basin itself, there's an additional 3.3 billion barrels of prospectivity uh, already mapped in these, in these structures here. The gapping climate has basically said we have a 38% chance of success on these untapped reservoirs, uh, which gives us another 1.2 billion. So just taking that risk and adding it to the 368, we get over one and a half billion barrels, but again, we have a 100% success rate so far, and we think it's going to be um, higher than the 38%. So I, I believe we're looking at a, at a range, you know, of two to three billion barrel from this basin. And I think you know, that's, that's, that's not using very, uh, um, not, not doing any gymnastics with the, uh, with the uh, uh, risk factors. Um, so that would be my, you know, I think where I used to say one to three, I'm thinking two to three is probably a more likely outcome now based on what we've seen. The other story, of course, is new basins. And again, this is this is the, the sex appeal. This is, this is the 230-carat blue diamond that, uh, that uh, my, my friend William is looking for. Um, um, this is where I think we step change the company and, and just we're able to, to open up one of these basins. So in the next year, we'll, we will be drilling all five of these uh, areas. Uh, we're drilling right now the, the Sir Thuk, the Thule well in North Turkana. That will be announced by the middle of December. We're drilling the Bahaki well right now on the Anza Basin. That also should be done by the, the middle of December. And then we're going to be moving this rig over to the Chubahar Basin. And then we're going to get one of the rigs that's probably in, in uh, uh, this area here in the second half of next year to drill the Cario Basin and the, and the Lake Turkana Basin itself. So these are kind of the ones we think are the most prospective. There are a number of other basins. We shot seismic in this South Cario Valley that's looking kind of interesting. Um, and we, we're just starting to, sh to uh, plan the seismic here in the Rift Valley Basin up north, which also looks quite compelling. So uh, a lot of stuff to do and, and, and a lot of upside potential. Uh, again, Satule is the one we're drilling now. We drilled the Savitka well. We found good seal. We found good reservoir. We found oil-saturated sand. But we don't think we got a good trap. So we've just moved over to this horse block here, and we're actually just about to drill into the main reservoir on that. So uh, um, again, we. We, this is not a big prospect. It's only 18 million barrels, most likely, but it proves the concept of the play. If 
we basically can clean oil and saturated sands in here to de-risk all of the prospects up in this northern part of the Tristana Basin, which is by far our biggest basin in the portfolio. The other one, uh, and then we'll move over here. This was this was a kind of a nice example of, of some brand new stuff that we shot. So um, this was a basin called the Chubahara Basin. It never had gravity. It never had seismic on it. It was completely frontier unknown. We went out and shot 1,200 kilometers of new seismic. And what we delineated is a, a, a basin which has a big deep up here, uh, transfer, form, transfer fault right in the middle, and then a big basin down here, both of which we think are capable of generating hydrocarbon. And all of these prospects, this is a, a string of pearls scenario, similar to what we had in the Lokachar, another string of pearls on this side of the basin, uh, and then some interesting kind of a Chuco-like um, center basin, uh, ramp site, uh, filled with salt rock. One thing we like about this is that there are DHIs, the direct hydrocarbon in the indicators, ADO anomalies, which seems to suggest there's a good source rock here that's generating. So this is uh, the first well we're going to drill is Jamila, which again looks just like uh, the, our friends Gami and Puiga, uh, right here up near this northern cooking pot. The second well we're going to drill is actually here, Gardein, which is on trend with this, uh, and the southern cooking pot, nice deep kitchen where we think we're generating uh, oil. You can see there's some nice bright spots up here. There's some very nice bright spots up here, again, that, that show that the oil is being generated. So we're going to drill those two wells, and if we have success, we're just going to leave that rig right there and just keep drilling prospects and probably bring another rig in. This is the one I think we're uh, both fellow and ourselves are quite enthusiastic about this base. I think we've got a very good chance to be the, the next big one. And if it works, we've got all of these these uh, basins on trend uh, in the new risk basin block that we signed up, uh, uh, where Marathon is a 50% partner in paying our way. So we had a, a nice little story uh, last week we had one of our, our guys out in the uh, field doing a, our environmental impact study for our seismic program. And uh, he came down by this lake and he met this farmer who was very distressed because he kept trying to drill water wells and he kept getting this, this petroleum substance that was coming up in the water well. So he told him, we can take care of that. And that's a problem that we think we can solve. So, uh, uh, a lot of interesting stuff on these basins. The, 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 gravid, the, the FTG shows some nice deep basins. Uh, we see oil slicks out on these lakes. We see tar balls on the sides of some of these lakes. So we think this is a pretty interesting and it's very frontier. We haven't even shot seismic on it, but uh, we're quite excited about this one. Um, Lake Turkana is, this is our biggest basin by far, about three times the size of any other basin, both in area and in prospectivity. An interesting area that it's the intersection of this Cretaceous trend and this tertiary trend. It looks very different than any basin we've seen so far. The structures on it are, are much more uh, um, dynamic. Um, you know, we have faults here that have 3,000 meters of throw on them. We have the biggest, deepest cooking pot of any place we've seen in, in the portfolio. Uh, we see some structures we don't see normally. You see, this, this is an inversion structure where you actually have a syncline at this level and an anticline at this level. And in that anticline, we see nice bright spots and flat spots and hydrocarbon indicators. So again, this is our, our biggest basin. We've shot the offshore now. We've got quite a few drillable prospects, and we'll drill at least two of these uh, the second half of next year. Um, we will drill in the onshore. What you'll see is Kaparo is probably one of our best ones, this big one here, the right next to the cooking pot. We can drill onshore, deviate the well, and uh, hit it in the uh, in an offshore position. Same with these uh, wells. Here's the shoreline. We can drill offshore, try this prospect, or probably more likely Kaparu, we quite like, um, um, drill that prospect. So we're still deciding with our partner which one of those we're going to drill, but I think that one uh, is looking quite, quite good as well. And then South Cario is actually kind of a splinter off of the main Mokachar Basin. A very similar base, a nice big deep hole, uh, the string of pearls, prospects that look just like the stuff we've been drilling, and again, nice bright spots and flat spots that indicate there's hydrocarbon. Uh, I'd be very surprised if we don't open up at least one or two of these uh, these basins. They look they look very good. Of course, we are drilling right now in Block Nine. We're drilling the Bahasi well. Um, you know, we're drilling in this section right here. Uh, we've got a big marker here, which we're not sure if that's basement or if it's maybe. Uh, uh, Jurassic tra uh, Triassic sediments, uh, but uh, again, we'll have this well down by first week of the 
cover probably and know what we got. The big prospect, and again, the best part of it is Marathon's paying 100% of the cost, so it's, it's a free well for us. Then we're going to move that rate to Sala, which again is a nice big prospect, 400 million barrel prospect. Um, we probably will have to pay part of that. I, put, I think uh, our current cash projection will probably get about two thirds of the way through that well before the carry runs out. We have to start paying uh, our share of the well. But it's two good, two good uh, opportunities, uh, generally paid for by uh, uh, our partner in, a, in an area that uh, looks quite interesting. Sala may be a little more gas prone. It's very close to the Bogal Deep, where we actually found gas a couple of years ago with the with the Chinese. Um, so there may be a, a, a bigger gas component here. But gas is not bad news in Kenya. They, they need power here. Um, the the new government has said they're going to add 5,000 megawatts of power, and they only have 1,600 megawatts now. So this gas, if we do find it, they're going to get a lot of support to uh, turn this into power. So this chart kind of shows you, these are all the other basins we're looking to open up. And again, the, the range on them is kind of between a billion and three billion, similar to uh, finding another Bokachar basin, with the exception of the Turkana basin, which is about three times that size. So those are those big offshore prospects that shows you, if we're able to prove that up, there's gonna be a big uh, jump in our, in our risk resources. So you can see our, our, our reserve auditor still doesn't think too much of these other basins. Uh, we've got 8 billion barrels met to us in these basins of prospects we've already mapped. But uh, on a risk basis, they only think that we're going to recover. They only have less than a billion. So they're saying we've got less than a 10% chance of finding oil in these basins, which is fair enough. You know, before we drilled in Gambia, we only had a 14% chance of finding uh, oil in that basin. So what I hope is next time I see you, this, this, this chart here, this may not change that much. It'll probably go up a little if we've got more prospects. But I'd like to see this one come up uh, significantly and, and move into the risk category. And this is, we will be addressing 5.7 billion of this 8 billion with our drilling program uh, this year and next year. So we'll, we'll be able to de-risk quite a bit of this portfolio. Uh, on the development side, the pipeline is going forward now. So there's been an MOU signed between Uganda and Kenya. So it's basically an export pipeline that is centered around our block. The Uganda pipeline will tie into it there, mm -hmm. and then it will go down to Lama. So the planning, the front engine engineering design, and even the tender, the government has uh, stated they're going to be putting out a tender before the end of the year for this pipeline. So um, uh, Sudan may also look to join us. I think uh, there's a little bit more work to do in Sudan to be able to join us. But you know, our position is we'd love to have other countries join us. If it makes sense. It'll make us, our pipeline quite a bit cheaper. If Uganda joins us, it cuts our pipeline cost in half. If uh, Sudan joins us, it cuts our pipeline that cost down to about a third. So we're more than happy to do it, but we're not gonna wait around forever. Um, if, if, the, if the governments don't agree, we'll build our pipeline first, and then they can they can look into it later. And we can actually wait until basically the day we order steel to make that decision, whether Uganda's gonna join us or Sudan's gonna join us, or, or both. Because it's just basically making a bigger pipeline. It's just ordering a bigger size pipeline and bigger pump station. So um, uh, we're quite quite pleased with the government support on this, and I, and I think you'll see quite a bit of project cross um, uh, quite a bit of progress made on this in, in the next few months. So I think this is an important chart. It kind of tells you it, it sort of ties into you know we raise this money. What are you going to see by the end of next year? These are all the wells we're going to drill basically by the end of next year. We're going to drill at least two wells in every one of our top basins as, as basin openers. So we'll have a pretty good idea of, uh, of those five basins, what's in there. Um, and we'll still have about uh, seven or eight basins more to drill, but these are the ones we think are probably the highest potential and furthest along. We'll also drill every prospects in the Lokachar Basin. Uh, there'll probably be a few added onto this, some of those North Etown, Northwest Etown, will probably be ended at the end of it. But by the end of next year, we'll have put a well in every one of the top prospects uh, in the, uh, the Lokachar Basin. Uh, we will have praised every one of these discoveries. In fact, we're going to do an extended well test on one of the wells, probably Gambia 2, uh, to get an idea of what the reservoir is. At the same time, the pipeline will proceed. By the end of next year, we will, we will have put out tenders for pipelines and we will basically have a pipeline plan. We also We'll be doing a development plan and we intend to turn that into the government by the end of next year. So really by the end of 2014, 
we'll have a pretty good idea of what we have. We'll have almost drilled out completely into low pitch our basin. We'll have a development plan. We'll have a, uh, a, a pipeline uh, plan. And really, that's the time we can start inviting uh, big companies to come in. We'll have de-risked the portfolio to the point where it's looking like proven and probable reserves, uh, uh, even if it isn't certified at that point. And that's when I think uh, we, we've maximized the value uh, of, of being able to bring in a partner. So we'll probably start the process about the, uh, the fourth quarter of 2014 of, of looking for a strategic partner um, and uh, hopefully conclude it by about the, the end of the first quarter of 2015. Um, again, we've got enough money to see us through probably into the, into the third quarter or maybe through the third quarter of 2015. So we'll have a bit of slack to do that. Uh, from a budget standpoint, again, the, that $450 million of equity we've got to the end of the year with over a half a billion dollars of cash in the bank. Um, we still are being carried on several blocks by Marathon. Uh, the budget this year was $209 million net to us of, of a gross $567 million budget. Budget next year, we are still finalizing, but we expect about a $750 million budget with our share of it being somewhere between three and three, three and three, uh, 300 and 330 million. And that's really with six rigs full time. If we do find oil in one of those new basins, we will bring another rig to, to, to drill in those new basins. So again, you've all seen this slide. You know, I, I, I'm still convinced that Africa oil is probably going to be end up being one of the best ones in. Um, uh, in the London history, and I, I do think we're very early. Obviously, we've gone up seven or eight times uh, from where we started. It's a little hard to buy stock once you've seen uh, that it's already gone up seven or eight times, but I do believe that we are in the beginning. We only go up 10 times, as I said, Lucas will tell us we're the, the slackers of the group. You know, the average is 32 times your money, so uh, we still have a bit of work to do and a, and a bit to go. I do want to spend a little bit of time on CSR. Uh, again, most of you know me. Uh, I moved to Nairobi a year and a half ago. And this is really what I spent most of my time on. I worked with the central government and with the local communities to try to make oil the best experience possible for the most Kenyans possible. Um, and I think uh, I think we're doing a very good job of it. I think we're uh, we're uh, um, the, the the central government is very supportive. They told us over and over again we're not going to change our contract terms, which is one of our important things. Uh, we're working on a lot of transparency things. I think that's one of the things that really could derail this project uh, if corruption or, or uh, creeps into it. So we, with other host governments, with the World Bank, are very focused on trying to keep corruption out. Um, you probably saw we did uh, we we suspended operations last week in uh, the Lokachar Basin in, in the Turkana region. Um, Polo did that, I think they did exactly the right pro proactive thing. So we had a small group of people who were unhappy that they weren't getting enough jobs and contracts. And uh, I can tell you, we, we are the biggest employer in Turkana. We employ 840 people in uh, the region, uh, but there's 800,000 people that live there. So we are only employing 1% of the people. The other 730,000 people would love to come and work for us too, but unfortunately we don't have that many jobs. Um, uh, from a from a uh, standpoint of unskilled labor, 90% of the people we work at that work for us are Turkana people. Uh, for semi-skilled people, 70% of the people that work for us are from the Turkana area. Uh, but for skilled people, almost zero percent are from Turkana. Uh, so that points to something we all have to do. We have to work with the government to basically start training and getting not only skilled people but semi-skilled people. So we've opened up a Polytechnic Institute, uh, we're, we're working on opening up a Polytechnic Institute in Lodoir, where we can train people like electricians, plumbers, welders, to, to fill those semi-skilled positions. Uh, we also are working with the universities to start training engineers, uh, drilling engineers, reservoir engineers, geologists, geophysicists. That process will take longer. That's probably a, a three to five year process to bring those people on. Uh, but we need, we need to get a, seat, a clear site I think it was a good wake-up call for us. We had a demonstration at our well site. There were basically people that were unhappy because they didn't have jobs. And the real issue for them is not so much that we're there, the expatriates working these jobs. Their biggest issue is other Kenyans who aren't from that area <coughs> are there doing jobs that they think they can fill. So I, I think it was, uh, you know, the, the, there there's been essentially four protests leading up to this, and the, each one getting a little bit more um, agitated. 
Uh, there, was, there was non-violent, nobody came in with weapons, no one was hurt, but we saw that path leading to potentially escalating to where there would be violence. I think Tullow did exactly the right thing. They shut everything down, uh, they evacuated the, the people, and um, they just let everyone cool off before it escalated to violence. So uh, I think it was a good wake-up call for everybody. I think the local community woke up and said, you know, we need to do this in the right way. We can't be um, hindering the, 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 the company and uh, we need to be working together with them. There is a, a, a grievance policy, but it's not, you know, going in and uh, um, invading that well site. The central government woke up a bit that they have to start taking a more active role, particularly in the capacity building. Uh, so I think uh, they're, they're doing uh, a better job, and I think we woke up a little bit, uh, particularly, you know, Tullo has just has realized we haven't done as much uh, really communicating. I think at the end of the day, it was really about communication that we hadn't talked about what our policies were for hiring. We hadn't had a transparent award of contracts. Uh, we didn't have an office in Mogwar and Mokasar. So uh, I think there's a, a good wake up call for us too. So we're all back to work, everything's going smooth, and I think everybody understands. And I think, um, you know, it, it was the right thing to do at the time because even though it cost us a fair amount of money, it probably cost us six or seven million dollars to stand down for, for 10 days. Um, if there was an, a, 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 if there was a violent event in that and someone was injured, and not just the local people possibly injuring our employees, we were equally concerned that the government might come in too heavy handed and start um, trying to stop the protest with force. So I think everybody's cooled down now. Um, this isn't a complete ending. You know, there is going to be, these issues are going to be important all the way through. And, uh, um, you know, there's no quick fix to this. This is a, a day in, day out process. You know, the bottom line is these people want to see benefit from the oil. They want it to come down into the community. They want to get the jobs. They want to get the contracts. That's the same thing we want. Uh, so we're, we're aligned on that. It's just a question of, of doing it and doing it quick enough. I think expectations are, are very high that uh, they're all going to be working tomorrow. They're all going to have great jobs and it is going to take some time. So again, this is what I spend my time on. I think we've, we've done a good job of this. But I think we probably need to do a little better job. So I know I'm running over a little. I'll summarize now. The, uh, uh, I think most of you know by now we do have the best acreage position in East Africa. Uh, I think I would argue that we might have one of the best acreage positions in the world. I, you know, I have, I've never seen a, an area this big with this much potential onshore with good contract terms. So I think we're in an enviable position. Now that we've drilled these four discoveries in the low pressure basin, you can count on uh, more discoveries. We're going to have a very high discovery rate. Uh, Tullow had 93% uh, success rate in the Uganda basin, and uh, ours is looking uh, like it, it could be heading towards maybe not quite that high, but uh, a very high uh, success rate. Again, lots of action. We've got uh, seven rigs right now. We'll have at least six active for the foreseeable future. And keep an eye out for these. These basin opening wells are going to be a, a real game changer, and I think you'll see. If we get one of those, I think you'll see the share price uh, go up dramatically. Again, the most covered com company in the, um, in the London history. Um, I understand we're over 50% of the volume on the First North Exchange. Uh, so uh, I don't know what's going to happen when we leave and go to the big board. If the First North is going to uh, survive without us. 